What's up everybody? So I'm going to do part four of uh, the Bye Bye 403 series in a video format. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's such an exciting topic. Um, it's ethics, which is everyone's favorite. Um, so um, the reason I'm doing this in, in video format is honestly the, the ethics of web scraping are, are like the ethics of anything else. They're really important, but they're kind of dry. And I didn't want to subject you guys to a written version and a blog post of it. So I'll try to make this as entertaining as I can and I wanna try and make it brief. It's easier to consume dry content via video than via blog post. So I'm gonna mention the five ethics that you really need to stick to when you're web scraping. A lot of us, when we do web scraping, we're looking to get data, we're looking to get information, we're looking to get what we need either for our clients or for ourselves, for our projects to either feed a neural network or some sort of uh, machine learning algorithm or even just to analyze data with like pandas or whatever. So the thing though is that web scrapers really have a bad reputation and it's, it's kind of strange how that happened because honestly Google is the world's biggest web scraper but, uh, and people love Google but the, the biggest difference between Google is web scraper and, their, and, and Google Webbot and Googlebot and your average like malicious web scraper is that Google honors the robots.txt file. Five areas that I'm gonna to cover today don't cover um, the robot.txt at all. The first point that I'm going to cover is uh, be aware of what you are scraping, okay? So that's a big, big thing that a lot of new folks don't realize is they request a web server that is storing a lot of images and they're requesting images in PNG format from a photo website and that is a lot of download. The biggest problem we run into as web scrapers as far as ethics go is we're, we're asking the web server that we're hitting to give us information with no potential of them being able to sell us anything. That's why I cannot stress enough, do not blind scrape. Do not just point at a website and parse HTML and that's how you figure out what you're gonna do. Go to the website you wanna scrape physically. Go there. I am bleeding. I cut my hand on glass while I was doing this. What's up everybody? So today I'm gonna do, I just stabbed myself with glass. I stabbed myself with glass. There was glass on my table and now it's in my hand. So if we're downloading images or we're downloading video or we're using like Selenium WebDriver to actually render a dynamic web page. You're actually asking that website to load a lot more content than is typically in the static HTML. So if we can scrape a website with requests or you know, beautiful suit, typically all we're doing is parsing HTML and HTML doesn't take up much more space than, than just text. It's not a big file, we're not asking a lot from the web server. However, if we're using Selenium WebDriver, um, typically we're asking a lot more from the web server because not only are we asking it to render its initial DOM, we're also asking it to dynamically update that DOM or make JavaScript calls uh, either to the back end with Node or to call on a certain API that's going to dynamically load information. And we're asking a lot more from it than if we're just getting static HTML. And are we getting multimedia? Number two, the, the second thing we're going to focus on right now is, is how to know when you're hitting the web server and when you're not. A lot of folks that I talk to, especially newbies in web scraping, they want to know when should I put in like a web driver wait or when should I put in a time dot sleep, you know, to, to keep the web server from, from pinging me or blocking me or blacklisting my IP address. A lot of, a lot of folks will put it at the end of, of every function, like they'll do a time dot sleep for one second at the end of every function or a web driver wait for a second at the end of, of every function that they do. But that's really not necessary because the only time we're even asking anything from the web server is when, when we're doing a request.get or when we're doing a webdriver.get, um, that's the only time we're even asking the web server for anything. Once the web server has returned that, what it returns, so in requests, um, it would be a, a requests object, which would be, you know, you do request.content or request.text. That content, that text, once it's saved to a variable, you have it. It's basically like reading it from a text file that you've read into memory. Hold on, wait, I said I'd make this interesting. Hold on, I said I'd make it interesting. So, right, hold on, that's it. Ethics is always better with a kitten. It's so much better. Don't you remember requests now? Cause there's a kitten. This is my kitten Yoda, by the way. He is he is Jedi Master of the House. 
and he definitely doesn't want to be held right now because he's in full-fledged kitten mode today. I'm going to just stick with this kitten. We're rolling with a kitten right now. Um, so basically, the only time you're really asking anything of a web server is when you do a request.get or you do a webdriver.get. Anytime you ask for a HTML DOM or anytime you ask for um, you know, HTML information, anytime you make an HTTP GET post or put request, uh, that's when you're getting, okay, <laughs> time for kitten mode to go down. Be free, young Jedi Master. Um, but anyway, anytime you ask the web server for something, that's when uh, you're actually using resources. So you don't have to, if you're doing your, your soup.finds, your soup.findalls, or your find by x path, or find element by class, or, or any of your Selenium stuff, or your, or your beautiful soup stuff, Anytime you're looking for those, you already have the HTML written into memory. But once you get that request object back or that web driver object back, you're not asking the server to do anything else. You've already got that written into memory and that's where you're parsing from. Number three, be aware of the difference between your URL and HTTP library requests and your web driver requests. Um, so for, for reasons that we've already covered, you want to know the difference between loading in from HTTP, which is just requesting HTML, or when you're actually physically loading a web page. Um, the biggest difference between these two is that one is simply requesting static content in HTTP, the other is requesting a full web page load. This includes initial HTTP or initial HTML DOM, uh, JavaScript loading of images, you're requesting a lot. So when in doubt, your Selenium web driver or any of your other like URL automation and, and browser automation tools are going to be asking more of the web server than your simple URL libraries or your request library. Honestly, do the right thing, even if you're scraping with Selenium, if you have a page or a site that you can use just to get HTML, use requests, use URL lib. Do not just be, don't be lazy and use your web driver and load all this JavaScript because that's absolutely gonna get you blacklisted or at the very least, it's gonna drive someone crazy at the company that you're scraping and it's gonna make it worse for the rest of us. Like it or not, the web is built on web scrapers. Google and search engines like DuckDuckGo and Google and Bing, they're all built on web scrapers of one kind or another. But you have to be conscientious of what you are doing when you're scraping. What are you asking a web server to do? Which leads me to point four, be aware of the resources that you're asking for and the resources that most websites have. So a great example of that would be, let's say you're, you're trying to automate some e-commerce stuff right? and they want to get all the product source and or the product pricing and availability information from one of their distributors uh, and they've been doing it by hand in their Shopify store for the last 10 years and they hire you to make it automated. Um, that distributor that you're requesting, they're a small wholesale website. If you've ever been to a wholesaler's website, they are bare bones design wise, which means they are bare bones hosting wise. A lot of hosting nowadays is, is cloud hosting and they pay for what they use. And honestly, a lot of them are run on EC2 instances or LightSail or DigitalOcean droplets that are five bucks and they have a gig of RAM and one CPU core. So basically to put it in perspective, if you're asking a website, let's say you need to, you need to scrape 100 pages. Um, from a, a distributor's website and you want to do it as quickly as possible for your client Well, if each of those pages is let's say even 50 kilobytes and you're making a bunch of requests and You're using selenium web drivers and you're loading up all the images when you could just be using the request library to load the 50k Now you're loading all the images and they're five or six megs a piece Now you've loaded a bunch of pages and you're trying to do it as fast as possible for your client and you've hammered that website use you, you've used up half of its RAM just by abusing and not realizing what you're doing when you're using your requests library or URL lib versus your Selenium. Now the other half of the RAM is dedicated to all the other clients on that website. And guess what? Now they're gonna lag or at the very worst, 
they're going to overflow their RAM and you're going to accidentally DDoS that small distributor's website. And that's why we have to be conscientious and ethical about what we're doing. We need to be aware of what we're asking from these web servers. Because honestly, most websites that I've encountered have no problem with you collecting data as long as it doesn't interrupt their day-to-day -day processes and it doesn't cost them a lot of money. Number five, this one I would say is arguably the most important because it gives you a rule of thumb, okay? Most web filters out there that are made to detect bot activity, they detect them largely by, hey, can a human make this many HTTP requests at this speed and gain anything meaningful from it? So if you're requesting information from a website faster than a lot of web filters arbitrarily believe a human would request it, you will get blocked. But if you get blocked, if you're like ripping through IP addresses and ripping through user agents, that's a good sign you need to slow down. So if you're scraping a web page and within the first, you know, 50 or 60 requests, you're going through like five to 10 IP addresses, you're going way too quickly. You need to put a web driver weight or a time dot sleep in there somewhere because you're really, really hammering things too hard. Your web server filter will tell you when it's time to slow down for the most part. But if you get blocked a lot and you're constantly having to recycle IP addresses and user agents, you are going too fast. So keep those five things in mind. Keep in mind what you're doing, what you're asking, what you're asking it of, and be aware of the facts that most people try to pay for as little resources as they think they will need. So don't abuse that. And just because we have tools like even Slither or Scrappy or a lot of these other proxy websites, don't abuse that. Just because it's there doesn't mean you need to abuse it. Be a good person, be ethical, Go out, scrape the web, gather data, build all the stuff you want, but do it in a way that's not going to make it harder for the rest of us. So that is the five points. Part four of Bye Bye 403, building a filter-resistant web crawler in Python. My name is Jake. I am CodeDuck. Also on Dev.2, I am Kelsey. And you can follow me on Twitter at CodeDuckME. Or you can even follow me on YouTube on here, the Code Duck channel. Uh, please do so. And I'd love to see your likes, your thumbs up, your subscriptions, your comments. I love reading your comments and, and listening and talking with folks. So please leave all that stuff. I would love to hear from you. See what you've built. Hit me up with a DM or a message or a comment. If you've built something really cool using a scraper, you scraped really neat stuff, I want to hear about it. I want to be part of the community. And as always, be ethical, go build, and the world needs engineers like you, so never forget that. This is Jake with Code Duck signing off.